Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about 10 things that you should know about your guitar. Let's get started. Now this week's video is geared more towards the newer player, but if you've been playing for a while, hopefully some of these tips and tricks uh, will be helpful for you guys as well. Let's jump straight in. So number one is how to lock your guitar strings in. Now there are guitars equipped with locking tuners, like this one, they've just got rotating discs that you can use to lock the strings in. It makes changing strings really easy, but odds are if you're a new player, uh, you don't have that luxury. So most of us maybe started on something like this, which is a Squire, a very serviceable guitar, just sealed locking tuners. But let's take a look at a way that we can lock the strings in similar to uh, the more expensive Fender. All right, so this is a relatively simple way to increase your tuning stability. So you wanna line up the holes in your tuning machines um, along the length of your neck, and then you put your string through just like that. And when it comes through, you wanna leave a little bit of slack, um, and then you're gonna kink the string just like that, and then you're gonna tuck it up underneath like so. And again, you can keep a little bit of tension on that right hand. So once it's kinked and turned around, all you do is you wrap it like this over the length of your string. You can kind of bend it down like that. And then once you have that, you're ready to go. You just wind your string up. And I'll try to get a nice uh, a shot of it for you guys. And you always want the coils to go down. I'll go maybe one more time around. And that's all there is to it. I'll see if I can get it here. But anyway, you'll see that the coils actually lock in this part of the string. Number two is tuning issues. Now this is something that plagues all of us as guitar players, but when you're a new player, it can be especially frustrating. Now perhaps you're turning your tuning machine and nothing's happening, nothing's happening, and then the string slips and you're way sharp and then you turn it back and turn it back and then it slips again and you're flat and you just can't get it uh, perfectly in tune. Um, that's uh, what's happening in the nut here. Now this guitar is set up uh, for nine gauge strings from the factory and usually on strats and tellies and stuff, you can go to tens without too many problems. Uh, but if you go to thicker gauge strings, um, and maybe you're, you're playing in drop tunings or something like that, um, the string is gonna get caught up in these nut slots. And so what you'd have to do is go get it filed for the correct gauge of strings. So if you've put heavier gauge strings on and you've noticed the tuning has gotten worse, that's probably what's happening. Now, if you're using the correct gauge strings for the nut and you're still having tuning issues and you've locked the strings in like I showed you in step one, um, what you can do is just add some lubrication to the nut. So all you have to do is pull the string out of the nut slot here and then take a pencil and just add some graphite to the nut slot. Um, I like to use one of these clicky pencils because uh, it's a little bit more precise. You can get it right into the nut slot and that just adds uh, some graphite and, little, and it will allow the string to move back and forth um, as you tune and as you bend your string. Number three is guitar body style. Now there's so many to choose from. It can be a little bit overwhelming when you're you know, wanting to buy a new guitar or just trying to figure out what you have. Um, but we're gonna go through some of the basic shapes today. Now this guitar is a dreadnought. It's a really common guitar shape designed to project with a lot of volume and a lot of low end. And of course it can come with a cutaway version or the full body. Now in contrast, this is an orchestra model. Um, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. It comes in quite a bit more here and here and then blooms out towards the backside. Um, this one obviously has the cutaway. Um, but it's got a more balanced sound, maybe a little bit more brighter. Now for electric guitars, there's two main varieties, a single cutaway and the double cutaway. Let's take a look at those. So let's start off by looking at the double cutaways. Now double cut just simply refers to this cutaway here and the upper cutaway here and leaves you with a bottom horn and a top horn. Um, single cutaways just have the bottom cut so that your hand can reach the highest frets. Now this is a Stratocaster, probably one of the most famous double cuts ever made. Um, yeah, just a really iconic design, really comfortable to play. Now another really popular double cut design is an RG. Now compared to the Strat, you'll notice right away the cutaways are quite a bit deeper, uh, much more angular kind of uh, a design to it, but it has 24 frets, so you need to be able to reach the highest fret with ease. So yeah, just a different design, uh, a different take on the double cut. So here's another couple examples of double cut guitars. This 335 looks so much different than the Ibanez RG, but both are considered double cuts. And here's a more modern looking uh, PRS Custom 24. Um, yeah, so all four of these instruments are double cuts and really iconic uh, designs in their own right. Now in contrast, single cutaways, true to their name, only have one cutaway uh, on the bottom and then the full body on the top. Now there's two guitars that come to mind uh, that are iconic single cut guitars. One is the Les Paul, of course, and then the second one, uh, if I can reach it here, is the Telecaster. So again, just a single cut on the bottom 
Um, a very different look than the double cuts, um, but beautiful guitars in their own right. All right, so the fourth thing that everybody should know about their instruments is the bridge style. Now there's two main styles, the fixed bridge and the tremolo bridge. Um, uh, since we had our single cuts out, let's look at those first. So we've got a stop tail piece here and the tunematic bridge here. So it's sort of a two piece fixed style. Um, your string goes through the back of the, the tail piece here and then over, over the saddles on the, the tunematic section. Um, very uh, common and a very old design. Let's take a look at the telly. So on the Telecaster, it's a fixed style as well. Um, the strings go through the back of the body here, through the ferrules, um, and then over the saddles. Now in this particular telly, you've got six individual saddles. Um, let's take a look at a telly with a different system. Now this telly also sports a fixed bridge, uh, but instead of having the six individual string saddles, uh, it's a more vintage correct uh, way of having three barrel saddles. Um, they both have uh, advantages and disadvantages, but this is more true to the vintage style. All right, so now that we've looked at a couple of examples of fixed bridges, let's look at some of the trims. The Floyd Rose is one of the most versatile and robust uh, trim systems around. Uh, this is the Ibanez version of it, the Edge Zero. Um, it's a really great trim system. Uh, you can bomb all the way down, so you can basically press down until your strings are slack on the fingerboard, and also you can crank it up, and uh, most of the time it'll return to perfect pitch. So it's a really great design. Um, this version has uh, sort of fine tuners built on the back too, so if something does go out, you can just uh, turn this little knob to uh, bring it back into tune. Let's look at another example. Another really common trim system is the two-point trim. Uh, these are used on fenders, uh, on GNLs like this one. I think Wilkinson makes a good one, so they can be found on a bunch of different uh, brands. Um, but basically it refers to these two pins. Uh, the bridge is sort of has these little knife edges that it rests on um, uh, between the tension of the springs on the back and the strings on the front. Um, you can float it so you can bend it up, although not as much as, uh, as the Floyd, and down, but not as much as the Floyd as well. Uh, generally, it's a pretty stable system. Now this is an example of a six point trim. Uh, you'll notice six different screws um, that hold the, the trim in tension between the strings and the springs on the back. Um, this one I found to be very stable. It's a great system uh, made by PRS and Fender's vintage system is also uh, similar to this, but I think the, the PRS, the more modern PRS one uh, holds tune a little bit better. And finally, we've got the venerable Bigsby. Uh, this is a really cool trim system. Basically the tension between the strings pulling one way and I don't know if you can see it, but a spring right here. Um, makes for really smooth uh, vibrato action, um, but it does take a little bit of uh, care to get it to, to return to tune perfectly. I think I've done an okay job on this one just in terms of lubrication and making sure the nut is uh, perfect and the saddles are perfect. Uh, this one holds tune pretty good, but it does take a little bit more maintenance than the others. Number five is the number of frets on your neck. Now, as intermediate and advanced players, we're always aware of how many frets we have on certain guitars, so we know how many scale positions we can go up the neck. Uh, but if you're a new player, you probably haven't thought about it, or if you just you know, found your dad's old guitar in the corner, uh, you maybe uh, haven't thought about some of the advantages or disadvantages of having certain numbers of frets. So let's look at that today. All right, so this guitar has 21 frets, uh, really common for fenders. Uh, you can always tell a 21 fret neck by a single dot on the last fret, and that means you can go up to a C sharp. So it gives you an octave up, now the disadvantages or are that you can't play in the key of D, you get up to C sharp and D obviously is a very common uh, key in music so you kind of lose out on that. Um, but it does allow your neck pickup to come uh, as far forward as you want and gives you a nice warm sound. Now here's another Fender, this one has 22 frets. So you can see the dot that would be on the 21 fret on our previous guitar, uh, you've got another blank fret. So it's easy to find a 22 fret neck by simply looking for a dot with a blank uh, on the final fret. Um, so this obviously gives you uh, more scale position. So this allows you to play not only in B minor, um, but also in D major, obviously your, your relative major and minor keys. Um, and just that one single fret gives you um, a bunch of different uh, scale options, which is really cool. And you'll notice the space between uh, this pickup and the, the tele pickup um, is different simply because you've got that extra fret, but that just hangs over the board. So your pickup can remain in the same position. Now this Ibanez or the PRS that I showed you uh, earlier, uh, they both have 24 frets, which is two full octaves, which gives you a lot of flexibility. So you'll notice two dots on the final fret um, and the PRS has the bird on the final fret. Um, but these give, give you the ability to play all the way up to E. So your first octave E 
and your double octave E. So it gives you a ton of flexibility to play all different scales, um, all the way from the lowest to the highest, which is really awesome. Um, but it does force your pickups a little bit further back. So if you just had 22 frets like this, like on a Les Paul or something like that, this neck pickup could actually be shifted forward, which gives you a, warm, a warmer sound. Um, but when you have 24 frets, it's kind of a trade-off. It gives you more scale options, um, but it does uh, affect the, the tone of the, the neck pickup, which tends to be slightly brighter. All right, number six is the pickup selector. Now, over the years, I've had a lot of students not quite understand what the, the pickup selector does and how it affects tone. So let's look at a couple examples today. Now, this example is a three-way switch. All the way back is your bridge pickup. Now, this is gonna give you a really high output, bright sound. Um, this in the middle position or second position here is both pickups on at the same time. And then in neck position or all the way forward, this is position three, um, it's gonna give you a nice warm sound. So let's take a listen to uh, what these pickups sound like. <laughs> On a Strat style guitar, you're gonna have a five-way switch. So position one is the bridge pickup by itself. Again, nice and bright. Position two is the bridge and the middle together. And this is hum canceling. We'll show you what that means in a second. Position three is the middle pickup by itself. Four is the middle and the neck. And this is hum canceling again. And then the neck pickup by itself, which is gonna be the warmer sound. So let's talk about uh, what hum canceling means. So if I dial up the volume, uh, we've got some distortion on and you're going to hear hum right away from the bridge pickup. So really, really noisy. Now when you go to position two, all that noise disappears. Position three, all the hum comes back. Position four, these two, hum cancelling, so it's quiet. And that's all it means. All right, so now that we've talked about the pickup selector, let's talk about the volume and the tones. Now on the Les Paul or Les Paul style guitars, you're gonna have two volumes and two tones. The top set is for your neck pickup, the bottom set is for your bridge pickup, and that just gives you a lot of flexibility when you're wanting to set up your sounds. So one way that I like to use it is with my, um, on my neck pickup, I'll have my tone all the way up to 10, but my volume will be maybe around six or seven. And then on my bridge pickup, uh, my volume will be 10, uh, but my tone will be down. So it kind of balances the tone between the two pickups um, while still giving you a little bit of a volume boost when you go uh, to your bridge pickup. And that's harder to do on styles where you just have like one volume and one tone. Uh, you have to sort of hit your tone knobs on the fly, but with the four knob controls, you can sort of set and forget. Now on a Stratocaster, it's a little bit more complex. You've got a master volume that affects all your pickups. Then you've got two tones. And unfortunately over the years um, on different models and at different times, uh, they change what these two tones, uh, tone knobs do. So on this particular model, the Squire Standard, this tone affects the neck pickup, this tone affects the middle pickup, and then there's no tone for the bridge pickup, which I, I really would rather have a tone on the, the bridge pickup just like I do on the Les Paul, just to tone it down a little bit when I flip to the back pickup. Um, it's quite bright, and in this example, um, you know, there's no way to tame that down. All right, so for numbers eight, nine, and 10, it's gonna be more tech-related stuff, um, but I believe every guitarist should understand how to make basic adjustments to your instrument, so we're gonna go through three basic ones today. Number one is don't fear the truss rod. The truss rod is your friend. So as uh, the weather moves from summer to winter or winter to summer, um, your neck is gonna move. And so being able to understand what the truss rod does um, will enable you to make basic adjustments to make your guitar play better. Now, when you tighten it, so when you're looking down into the truss rod hole and you move it clockwise, you're gonna counteract the tension of the string. So if your neck is bowed too much like this, uh, tightening up the truss rod will just straighten it out like that. Um, and likewise, if you loosen it or go counterclockwise, if you've got <clears throat> too much, uh, if it's too concave and you're getting fret buzz in the middle of your guitar, it'll allow the strings to pull the neck straight like this again. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, it'll make it play better. But there is a tool to help you with that. Um, I got the straight edge off Amazon for like 15 or 20 bucks. Uh, well worth it, uh, especially if you have multiple guitars that you wanna set up with the same uh, action. So this enables you to quickly make uh, your neck straight. That's got a side for Gibson and for Fender. So you just throw it into uh, your, your fingerboard like this. There it goes. Um, and I don't know if you'll be able to see, but anyway, there's just 
the slimmest amount of light right here. So there's just a little bit of bow right there and then it's tight here and tight by the neck pickup. Uh, so virtually straight. All right, we've arrived at number nine. Now that we've straightened out your neck in the previous step, you can adjust your saddle height. So on Les Pauls, you can't adjust individual saddle heights like you can on a fender, but you can move the whole bridge up and down. Um, but you basically can keep like with on an RG style or on a Les Paul style where the neck is basically flat or the fingerboard is flat. Um, you can keep your saddles generally flat, but on a fender, um, especially if you have the, the seven and a quarter inch radius, um, your six string and your first string saddle should be lower and your middle strings, the fourth and the third should be higher. So it should re reflect um, the radius on your guitar neck. So just take a quick uh, look on your guitar. Make sure it's not totally flat if you have a fender style um, and arch them a little bit and that'll increase the sustain. So your, your notes won't be fretting out and it's just gonna make everything play a lot better. All right, so we've arrived at number 10. We've straightened out the guitar neck. We've set our saddle heights to reflect the radius on the fingerboard. The last step is intonation. So this is gonna be nice and easy. All you do is you attach a tuner to your guitar or plug it into a tuner, whatever you have. And basically intonation, if your intonation's out, you're gonna be in tune down here. And as soon as you cross over the 12th fret and get up into the upper octave, you're gonna be out of tune. And so maybe you guys have uh, experienced that before as you jump octaves between your pentatonic positions or whatever scales you're playing. Um, as you get up, it just sounds out of tune. So correcting the intonation will um, fix that problem. So there's an easy way to do it. Um, and that is using the back adjustment screws on the bridge. Now, if your guitar is sharp up high, what you need to do is move your saddles back. So you'll just take your screwdriver and tighten that up so that the saddle moves backwards. And opposite wise, if you're um, going flat in the upper octaves here, then you're gonna move your saddles forward. And each string will have to be done individually. And so all you do is you play the string, make sure it's in perfect tune, and then play the upper octave. And you don't wanna press down too high, especially if you have jumbo frets, cause you will press it down a tune. So just lightly press it and that is showing up perfect on my tuner because I've set this previously, obviously, but if I needed to adjust it one way or the other, you just use this back screw, make sure it's perfectly in tune with your open string and then up on 12th fret and do the same thing for each, uh, each string. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you can do so by clicking right here. You can check out the tab store up above here. And if you wanna watch a couple more videos, I'll throw some up on that side. Have a great week, you guys. We'll see you next week with a new video. Take care.